Hi, everybody, and welcome. Today is Wednesday. It's May 27th. Uh, if it's hard to believe that we've already been doing uh, this for almost, I guess it's two months and a half or something like that. Mm -hmm. It's incredible since COVID started. I counted. It's 11 weeks. 11 weeks. Yeah, it's it's been it's been quite a ride for sure. And so we've all experienced a range of emotions. And what we wanted to talk about today was coping with grief um, during our pandemic. And so there's especially now we're talking, we're you know hearing about graduations and just so many different celebrations and milestones of life that are now changed because of the pandemic. So my name is Rachel Lennons and I'm here today with Becky Ryder. And she is a um, trauma specialist and a somatic experience, spe experiencing specialist. One of the areas that she works in is grief, um, for sure. That's a part of trauma, and it's also a part of our everyday lives. So she's going to talk with us a little bit about um, the symptoms of grief and what that might look like as we're moving through this pandemic. Welcome, Becky. Thank you for being here with me today. Hi, Rachel. Thanks for having me. I think something definitely two things to remember about with grief mm -hmm. with grief there's always loss mm -hmm. and it is a very normal feeling right so you know right now the world we know has changed mm -hmm. and, and for a lot of people that can be a loss that change can create loss there's job loss, which can include, include financial loss, financial anxiety. There's a loss of safety in the world for so many people. Mm -hmm. Well, and that's where I think um, that kind of brings me to my first question, which is, are we all grieving in some form or fashion? And you mentioned a few of the losses that people have already experienced or maybe experiencing um, as an example of grief, right? Yes, just as I, I mentioned in my, my last one, we're all having collective trauma, but we're also all having collective grief. Mm -hmm. There's so many, there's so many ways of grieving right now. There's fears for the future. Mm -hmm. There's fears for loved ones. Are they going to get the virus? What's going to mm -hmm. happen? What are our lives going to look like? There's just, there's even anticipatory grief. Uh huh. But fearing about maybe older loved ones, people that already have an illness, am I gonna lose them during this time? What that's gonna be like. Right. There's also unexpected loss, like a death of a loved one. Mm -hmm. And things that we don't expect to happen right. when we're in the middle of a pandemic. Mm -hmm. um, and that can create so many different feelings. Mm -hmm. And it's a loss of, like you said, graduation, a loss of expected mm -hmm. traditions. Right, like touring colleges, for example. Yes, weddings. Mm -hmm. I know many people that have pushed back their weddings. Mm -hmm. Or it's changed the way they're celebrating to minimize social contact and things like that. Exactly, and we're having to change our daily way of life wearing masks, um, having hand sanitizer when maybe we may not have in the past, right. cleaning supplies, even trying to find cleaning supplies. Right. Um, we're hard. having to cope with so many changes. And um, also we're coming up on the summer months and that's a time when a lot of people travel or maybe put their kids in summer camps or things like that. And, and it's looking different depending on the, the place where you're located, but I'm sure that even travel and the things that we usually do as families to get away, that's going to be impacted in, in a lot of different ways as well. Yes. And there's a huge loss uh, for so many people of social connection. Mm -hmm. Not only are we social distancing, there's a loss of social connection. You're, you're not getting, hugs from loved ones, mm -hmm. you're not able to be close to them and see that they're okay. Mm -hmm. uh, there's just so many different things and, and the feelings of isolation, mm -hmm. grieving the times when we could easily reach out to friends or say, hey, let's go have dinner. Right, right, or even I know that we've uh, missed out on some holidays as well, times when we would normally spend with family. Uh, yeah. We didn't travel during those times. 
Yes, birthdays, baby showers, weddings. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's all loss of of experiences. Yeah. So in in so many different ways, depending, you know, everybody's unique. We have the actual losses and the actual griefs that are more tangible, the things that we commonly think about. But then we also have the losses of things we might have anticipated to happen in the future, events, celebrations, connections. Um, just the our our way of life has changed in so many exactly. ways. Exactly. Yeah. Well, what are some of the symptoms? How might this be impacting us, basically? What are some of the symptoms or ways that grief might be showing up for us in our in our day-to-day life? So some symptoms could be, you know, thinking of I'm when I talk about symptoms, I'm thinking about the isolation and the anxiety. And mm-hmm. so there may be old grief also coming up in this instance where someone is isolated, maybe their partner passed away mm-hmm. and they're grieving that loss of, oh my gosh, I, I miss them already and I'm missing them even more because right. I'm isolated at home. Oh, so that's- may, yes, so there's also some re-experiencing of mm-hmm. grief symptoms. Mm-hmm. that you've had before. If I wish this person was really with me right now. And yeah. so that is a symptoms of re-experiencing those feelings of old grief. Mm-hmm. Also yeah. trouble focusing, trouble sleeping or sleeping more. Mm-hmm. Um, Feeling more tired. Yeah. Or yeah. Yeah. Fatigue, low energy. Mm-hmm. All of those things are symptoms, headaches, upset stomach. Mm hmm. Avoidance, maybe you're someone who is avoiding talking about getting together or talking about COVID or talking about the future. Mm -hmm. They just want to live in right now and focus on what's happening right now. And and that's okay. These are all very normal symptoms of grief and what we're experiencing right now. They might be using different coping skills or unhealthy coping skills like emotional eating, Mm -hmm. um, online shopping, Mm -hmm. impulsive online shopping, drinking. Mm -hmm. Uh, I definitely, I remember hearing in some article that Texas was, if not number one, a high number for um, alcohol delivery. Oh. Mm -hmm. (laughs) During the pandemic. So, you know, there's, there's lots of things that we may not typically do, but as grief comes up, around all of these things, we're doing more destructive behaviors that could just be uncomfortable and um, really cause a lot of problems for us. Yeah. yeah. And I think, and you, you mentioned like the anxiety at, on one hand, it could be fatigue and sleeping more, but on the other hand, it could be just that anxiety because again, the loss of the things of the future as well, the loss of the, I don't know, security, if you yes. will, of, you know, we're going to go on vacation on this day and we're going to do this, or I'm going to see grandma on this day and um, we're going to be able to connect or just all the different things that were quote, kind of like our knowns in life are now if unknowns. Yes. Knowing when you're going to see your family and when you're going to see friends and loved ones, when even just having an end date right now, there's, there's not a specific end date of when we're going to, stop grieving? When are we going to stop feeling anxiety? Mm -hmm. When are we going to stop being scared in our own world? Right. That we used to feel safe in. Right. Exactly. Yeah, it is. um, That is another hard part of it is that even though we've already been 11 weeks, it's hard to imagine it, the not knowing how much longer things will be so different. And then, yeah, it it is. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm sure yeah. that contributes to it. So um, do you have any suggestions on how we can cope with all of this? Uh, the grief symptoms, whether it's the anxiety side of it or the sadness side of it or just the heaviness of it all? Yes. Yeah, so I definitely, you know, it's not the same as being in person, unfortunately, but mm-hmm. I definitely encourage anyone who's grieving or feeling anxiety or depression or just something that they're, they're struggling with is to reach out to family and friends. Mm-hmm. They're, it's not a burden. It's not being a burden. That's 
one of the things I hear from clients all the time. Mm -hmm. Family and friends are there for you because they love you. They care about you. They want to support you during this time and they can't support you if they don't know you're struggling. Right. Mm -hmm. And it's important to be vulnerable and it's really important to feel your feelings. So many people tell themselves, I shouldn't be feeling this way. I haven't lost anyone. Why am I sad over a vacation? Mm -hmm. Right. Your feelings are whatever feelings you're having are absolutely valid and you need to take the time to feel your feelings. I um, actually read an article earlier today that was I found I found it very relieving because um, this woman, she was asked by a journalist, you know, can you tell us like what we can be doing to uh, plan the next adventure in our life during this time, you know, of downtime or what have you? Mm -hmm. She said she responded with no. <laughs> no, oh. we're exhausted. We're too tired to be thinking about that. And I just felt like it was a really appropriate response to say, um, it's okay that we're not, I don't know, you know, changing our lives right now, but that we're wherever we are. Yes, yes. It's okay to be in your present moment and what you're mm -hmm. feeling. Right. And that it's okay to feel how you're feeling and that it's not going to last forever. Our feelings change, they shift. Mm -hmm. And if you're feeling sad or anxious now, it's okay to feel that way and to not shame yourself for how you feel. Don't say, it's not okay to feel this way, or, you know, it's not as, I haven't been struggling as much as someone else. Well, you're still struggling. This is, right. this is something we've never experienced before. It's hard for everyone. Right and to not minimize that. Yeah, and the shoulds, right? I should be cleaning out more closets or yes. doing more to educate my child or whatever it is. Yes, there's so much that we put on ourselves Yeah, mm -hmm. that is unnecessary. And that leads me into self-care. Mm -hmm. One of the things that it's so important to take care of yourself during this time. Mm -hmm. And when you're experiencing grief and self care looks different for everybody, it can be meditation, it can be a face mask, it can be saying no, right? It can be setting a boundary, just like you said with the journalist. No, mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, self care can can look like yoga and journaling, whatever mm -hmm. helps someone be in their feelings and in the present moment and also express them is yeah. really important and, and helps you relax. Mm -hmm. And I think it looks like somebody uh, posted in the comments here about grounding and that's excellent, um, mm -hmm. especially with anxiety and anxiety or depression or just the heaviness of grief. Um, there's a lot of different grounding skills. Um, she talked about being barefoot in the grass and that's a really wonderful way to be present in the moment. Yes, exactly. If, if you're struggling to be present or feel your feelings, grounding is a great way to help you be in your body and notice your five senses. Mm -hmm. Just like, you know, the touch with bare feet in the grass, mm -hmm. um, the last drink that you just had, what you can see, mm -hmm. all of the, that's so important to help you be in your body and be present in your experience so that your body can grieve how it needs to. If you find that you're crying a lot, that's okay. That's letting your body do what it needs to do to process the grief. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, yeah. And most importantly, I think it would be to find support. Reach mm -hmm. out to a therapist. Mm -hmm. uh, reach out to someone who can, you know, or your massage therapist or physical therapist or, you know, any kind of, support that you need in the moment. Maybe it's not emotional support. It could be physical support mm -hmm. that you need or a way to break the isolation, but in a safe way. Right. But I definitely recommend for anyone who is grieving to talk to a mental health professional mm -hmm. to be able to process that grief and work through a lot of those feelings and be supported during that process because grieving alone and feeling anxiety alone and feeling all these scary feelings by yourself is even more isolating than you already are. Right. Yeah. It's very overwhelming. 
Mm -hmm. And Mm -hmm. having that, even though it may not be in person, but even having a social connection over a screen or over the phone can be so healing. Yeah. And really help pull you into a place of support and care and love. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's really good advice because just having that support having that resources or, you know, each person, what works for you is unique as well. Um, really helpful to kind of do it while you're going through it. Yes. And I, and I like to give a few options because it's different for every person, not one, one thing won't work for every single person and it's good to try different things. And it, unfortunately it can be slow at times. Mm -hmm. It's not a fast process to, to work through grief and you might have to try a few different things to find what works for you to cope. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, um, do you have any other um, comments or suggestions or does anybody have any questions that you'd like to ask Becky while we're here live with her? You can post it in the chat um, and let us know. We do, we do online therapy right now. So, and it, and it looks just like this um, on the screen. So if you are interested or would like a free consult, you can give us a call at 832-559-2622. And we'd be happy to talk with you and find out how we can best support you. Um, you can also visit our website. It's edinscounseling.com. And if you go to our blog area, there are several articles with some tips or resources um, that can help you with a lot of the different skills that we talked about today. Do you have any uh, final comments for everybody today, Becky? I think my only final comment would just be the reminder that what you're feeling is normal. Yeah. Kind to yourself. Yes. To be kind to yourself during this time is so incredibly important. Yeah. And please don't hesitate to reach out if you need any support. Yes, definitely. I think that is just being where you are and knowing that where you are right now is okay. I think that is so important because there's just so many different pressures and shoulds and it can be very overwhelming. Exactly. Mm -hmm. I agree. Yeah. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for joining us today. Really appreciate it. And we wish you all well. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye.